You've heard us talk about Anchor before. Anchor was recently acquired by Spotify and has become Spotify for podcasters. And we love this interface. We've been using it for a long time and we feel like it is super user friendly. It made it so easy for us to start a podcast. Yes. And we have equipment available to us at our local library. You know, we love our library and that's where we record. But if you don't have that available to you, Spotify for podcasters allows you to record and edit all from your phone. Mm hmm. And upload to Spotify, obviously, and any other podcasting platform you can think of, such right. as Apple Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, anything. Yeah. And you have the option to do Q&A with your listeners. You can monetize your podcast through subscriptions or through ads. It's super user-friendly, super easy to do. And so, best of all, it's free. And it's free. And there's no catch. So if you're interested in starting a podcast, and you could today, you want to visit www.spotify.com backslash podcasters or download the Spotify for Podcasters app. And good luck. Go start a podcast. Katie. And I'm Erin. And you're listening to Rope Drop and Park Hop. It's gotten so much easier to say that. Remember when we were first recording and it, we stumbled over Rope Drop and Park Hop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now it just rolls off our tongue. It's just like I dream about it. Yes. <laughs> I could say it in my sleep. Uh, Wait, weather report. Oh, boy. Guys, the next 10 days, today and tomorrow, we're in the 60s, mm-hmm. but then it's 70s and 80s yeah? in our forecast, which... Just in time for me to leave town. To go to Orlando. hmm this weekend. Yeah. How excited are you? Pretty excited now. Are you? Yeah. I mean, I've been excited for sure, but now it's actually here and I can think about it. And I, we talked about this the other day, but I compartmentalize a mm-hmm. lot with trips. And so if I have trips in between another trip, I don't think about it <laughs> until I get back from other trips. And she just got back from Seattle. Yes. Because we went to a wedding. Your brother in law got yes. married. My sweet brother in law got married. It was beautiful. Good. And. We're home, and now I am hopping on a plane again. <laughs> I know. And <laughs> it's then been a we, busy month. And then, spoiler alert, mm-hmm. we had talked about trying to go to Anaheim for our 100th episode. Right. We had a lot of people suggest that we should celebrate our 100th episode by going to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And we will. Yes. Just not yet. Just not this month, probably. We well, we'll see. It. Well, maybe. Yeah. We have some discussion. We're discussing yes. it. It's We're... in early. F- I don't know. It's not in early <laughs> stages. I was going to say it's in early <laughs> stages, but no, we've hammered it to death. Yes. We're trying to make it work. May is just such a busy month for both of us, yeah. and making it work is going to be hard, but we'll see. We'll, we'll keep see. you posted. We'll we promise. Keep you posted. Yes. And we have things we want to do. It may not coincide exactly with our 100th mm-hmm. episode, but we'll celebrate. Yes. And we're sure. thinking that we'll celebrate all year long, because <laughs> if Disney can do it, why can't we? That's right. Right? It's the it's the rope drop 100. Yes. And it's the 100th for Disney, too, the Disney company. I feel like that is it was meant, meant to be. be. Mm-hmm. We need something for our... We need something to wear that somehow designates the 100. Yeah. We can totally find that. Yeah. We have to go to find it. <laughs> we have something made. But Katie gets to go to Walt Disney World this weekend. Yes. I'm not at all jealous. Um, this is your third trip to Walt Disney World this year already. I know. I was saying on, well, so we recorded an episode yesterday with some special guests that you will get to hear from next week. Mm-hmm. And I was saying I almost feel like I'm cheating on Disneyland because I've been to World much more lately Mm -hmm. than Land. I know. And I'm ready to go back to Land. But you know what? Okay, one of the things that we've... (laughs) Here, let's deep dive into this for just a second. (laughs) One of the reasons that we haven't... That we didn't book a trip to Anaheim for Mm -hmm. our 100th is ticket prices are stupid. Airline ticket prices. Airline, yes. And like so expensive, like more than double what we typically would pay to get down there. We could go to Orlando for the same price, almost, which I've actually almost. considered. <laughs> I've actually considered saying, let's go to Orlando and do that instead because the plane tickets are not that much different. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know why they're so expensive. Dear Southwest. I know. Get your act together. Get your crap together. And stop raising your prices and giving subpar service. Right. Like they have had to halt flights every once in a while. Right. They have that whole debacle in December. I just don't get it. I don't get why we're paying more money yeah. when you're having so many problems. Yeah. But there it is. What can we do? Yeah. So we're working on it. We'll yes. figure it out. We'll keep you posted. We will. And no matter what, there will be some exciting things happening. So. Yeah. We have some ideas. Whether it's now or later, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. All right. Let's read a review yes. real quick. This is from one year ago. 
from Nicole Stolfa. Thank you so much, Nicole. She says, super helpful. I go to Disney World every year for the past 10 years and will be traveling to Disneyland for the first time in two weeks. You can imagine my panic. I've been binging this podcast for a few weeks now, and it has helped me so, so much with strategies, rides, and attractions to go on, and so much more. I feel at ease going into this trip after listening now. I'll continue to get in the rest of the episodes before we head to the Disneyland Hotel April 15th. Thank you for what you do. You are so welcome, and thank you for your review. That was a wonderful review. It was. Yeah. And it brings to mind, we got a suggestion re- a suggest. <laughs> <laughs> we got a suggestion recently that we should do an episode for what Disney Worlders mm-hmm. should look for their first time at Disneyland. Right. So Disneyland planning for Disney World regulars. Yes. Yeah. And that brings that to mind yeah. because that sounds like what she was. And I hope your trip was awesome, Nicole. Yes. We, I, yes. Me too. At the Disneyland Hotel even. Yeah. Magical. Magical. I haven't even done that yet. <laughs> okay, let's pause. Yes. And let's address something. Yes, we need to make a little apology. We need to. So we received some feedback. Actually, it went into our, like... Spam folder. Super spam mm-hmm. folder. Like, not even our... So Instagram is weird when you have a creator account. You have your main folder. Then you have a second folder that you can kind of file things into. Mm-hmm. And then there's a third folder where they send... People messages, that you don't know. Right. That maybe don't follow you mm-hmm. or anyway. And then there's a subsidiary of that th- third folder that gets buried down and it's called hidden requests. Mm-hmm. And that is usually where the super spammy stuff goes. Mm-hmm. I think they have code words that they look for. Mm-hmm. So that's where we get the ones that are like, grow your Instagram by 10,000 followers <laughs> overnight. Pay us and we'll. Yeah. Yeah. Partner things like that. with us. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Anyway, somehow this message had gotten buried in that deep fourth folder, Mm -hmm. and we didn't see it until recently, but we appreciated the feedback. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it wasn't something that we really thought hard enough about. Yes. And we're going to apologize. Yes. So we just want to apologize maybe to our little ears. Yes. Um, Or or our older ears that that don't want to hear about it. Right. Yeah. We talked a little bit about, we're from Idaho, of Mm -hmm. course, and we talked a little bit about Lori Vallow a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. and how we've been following that trial. Katie got to go sit in a couple times and we talked a little bit more specifically about it. And we apologize because some people don't want to hear that. Right. It wasn't super kid-friendly content and we apologize for that and we will be better in the future of being aware of who our listeners are yes. and we want to be a kid-friendly family-friendly podcast that's right. our goal so and so we're sorry to any parents that yes. may have been bothered we're sorry to any of our listeners that may have cringed a little bit when we talked yeah. about it and if we decide to deep dive further into that which we talked about mm-hmm. uh, that will be separate a from separate this. podcast yep. right Yep. yep. So With anyway, a different thank rating. you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for the feedback. Yes. We appreciate it. We're always open to feedback. And yeah, we're just really sorry we didn't think about it until mm-hmm. somebody presented it to us in that way. Right. So. OK. Yeah. Um, let's talk about news. OK. Let's talk about closures first. Yes. It's been big news. In fact, I haven't shared about it on Instagram just because sometimes when things get shared on Instagram, I feel like everybody <laughs> shares the same thing. Yes. And I'm just like, I don't want to be. And Instagrams are our, what would we call it? Just not our priority. Right. I mean, it's fun for us to do and it's fun for us to connect. Right. But, but we like to disseminate information here more than right. we like to on Instagram. So this will always be our first course of sharing information. Mm-hmm. Instagram is there for people who want to see it. Visual, right? Yeah. yeah. It's more visual. And maybe sometimes we're not going to be super late breaking just because yeah. we both work, we both have families. And also, I just... I'm so tired. Anyway. Instagram is a lot of work. Instagram is a lot of work. (laughs) Instagram's exhausting. Anyway, um, it's fine. It's totally fine. And it's a lot of fun. And it's my favorite. Like, I actually really enjoy it Mm -hmm. because I enjoy connecting with people. And we don't really connect through this. But it's a lot of work. Anyway, a couple of things to note, refurbishment schedule-wise. Matterhorn reopens for back cracking and uh, whiplash Whiplashing. on June 2nd. So you'll be able to go down there and mm-hmm. feel like an old person again. Yes. Yay! And that'll be post-Splash Mountain closure. So yes. you're, you'll have one mountain back open right after another one closes, which means for a couple of days there will be two mountains down. Sad. Yeah. What are we? Uh, the better mountains will still be available. That's true. To be honest. Yes, that's true. So you can still do Big Thunder and you can still do Space, mm-hmm. but... 
keep in mind that particular weekend Mm -hmm. you won't have either of those. Because, reminder, Splash Mountain's last day is the 30th if you plan on riding it one last time. Uh, The 30th is when you can do that. And let's side note this really quickly. Our friends at uh, the DMSW podcast Mm -hmm. and also Hannah Learning Disney, so Hannah and Johnny J., have come together and created a fundraiser. I think we've mentioned it we kind did. of in passing. And we wanted to do something fun, and we just haven't <laughs> come <laughs> up with come that yet. to fruition yet. Um, but they are doing a fundraiser in conjunction with the closing of Splash Mountain uh-huh. to benefit Chalk, the Children's Hospital of Orange County. Yes. So if you want to participate in that, look them up. We can share some of those details on our Instagram and maybe in the show notes. After we just talked about how much we hate Instagram. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't hate it. That's a joke. Anyway, so... But watch for that. So one of the parts of that fundraiser, though, is they plan on being there that last day and riding um, Splash Mountain as many times as they can. Mm-hmm. So that'll be kind of fun to pay attention to if you're not able to be there. That sounds exhausting to me. I agree. Because the line is going to be long all day And it's going to be hot. And it's going to be hot. And you're going to be soaked. Yeah. I think it sounds miserable. It does. <laughs> Good for them. It goes to a great cause. It does. I love their cause. Mm-hmm. I love the Children's Hospital of Orange County. I love that they're willing to do it. Good for them. Go get it. <laughs> I thought about going down, and I just, I don't know. We just were talking about mm-hmm. that before we hit record, and it it's, just seems like a really hard time for us to make it work. So, yeah. anyway, your son graduates that weekend? Yes, my son graduates that weekend. I have a fifth grader graduating elementary school that week. It's just yeah, it's Memorial not Day gonna weekend. Happen. It's the last week of school for our school district. Mm. It's just so much going on. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Dear Disney, could we have postponed it one week? Mm-hmm. And that would have worked so much. No, it wouldn't have because my son's birthday is the next week. So <laughs> even if they had. Anyway. Okay, so that's closing on the 31st. Last day to ride is the 30th. And then June 5th, people are in a tizzy, guys, because... There are four rides going down for refurbishment June 5th. And, of course, the schedule only goes out to June 6th at this point. Mm -hmm. So we don't know when they'll be back up. So at this point, it is. It's indefinite. It's indefinite. Alice in Wonderland, Mr. Toad, and Peter Pan's flight will all be down. And those are all connected. So it makes sense. Maybe they've got some mechanical workroom you know, the backroom stuff to work on right. for all Show three of those rides. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those three will be down indefinitely. <laughs> and then over at DCA, The Little Mermaid closes on the same day. Okay. So you'll have a few rides going down. Oh, lots and, of dark rides. Yes. And lots of air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, the Fantasyland rides are not that cool. They're not really. The Little They're Mermaid old. is, though. <laughs> so for me, we always talk about this when big rides are down for refurbishment. This wouldn't change my plans. No, not at all. If you're super intent on writing Peter Pan, mm-hmm. I mean... Maybe postpone for maybe, that. Maybe, but, but it's, keep in mind, it's like a 90-second ride with a 45-minute line, mm-hmm. and there's plenty to do, even with these three attractions being closed. Yeah. So I wouldn't change plans for these three being... Or, well, I guess there's four rides, but specifically these three mm-hmm. being down. Mm-hmm. So anyway... Okay, and then that's it for refurbs. That is up. it for refurbs. Still yes. no word on the treehouse. The scrim is down, but you still can't go in it. And I guess this could be added to the refurbishment list. If you guys haven't been paying attention or if you're not on social media, you might not know that Fantasmic is down for oh, a hot yes. minute. <laughs> Murphy the dragon. <sighs> Burned up. Burned all up. The mistress of evil is gone. Mickey took his dream back, and <laughs> she is gone. I the videos. I mean, I'm not laughing because some people did get actually hurt. They there have been six people treated for oh, really? smoke inhalation. Yes. Oh, last I knew, nobody had gotten right, hurt. Right. That, that's okay. late breaking news. I think from last night. Okay. They reported that there were six people being treated for smoke inhalation. No. So that part is not funny. The funny part to me was watching the one cast member try to put it out with a little hose, and then Mickey just kind of slowly. Lowers down into, into the, the ground. ground. Like Mickey stood his ground. <laughs> like whoever that cast member is, kudos to you. Yes. Because seriously, I would have been running the other direction. Yeah, right. And he looked up, he saw the fire, and still held his arms in place, yeah. and then just slowly went down into the ground <laughs> in the trapdoor. Oh, it's like that um, meme of Homer Simpson sliding back into the bushes. You yeah, have seen that one before. Yes. That's what it reminded me of. Oh, so good for you. You are. You deserve an Oscar because yes. that was impressive. Well done. But, yeah, the dragon burned. Aww. It looked to me, if you watch the whole video, and I've seen some discussion on it, it looked to me like there was some sort of gas leak because Maybe. in the very beginning when the head started to <laughs> – now I'm, like, super conscientious about the things I'm I saying. Know. Anyway, in the very beginning when everything started the fire, 
you could see like some dripping mm-hmm. almost. And so it just it looked like a big malfunction, yeah. obviously a malfunction of some sort. And Murphy has had problems in the past. He he is not without drama. Like he, he yes, malfunctions on both everyone's coasts. yes <laughs> on in the Festival of Fantasy Parade. Sure. That's, whatever. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Or he. Yeah. She, he, she. I guess she? it's Maleficent, so yeah, it's a she. I would think. But Murphy's a boy name, so I don't know. Anyway, it's that who, w- who knows when Phantasmic will be coming back. I don't know. It's, it seems like they have performed Phantasmic without the dragon right. before, so maybe they well, will they just do that. Well, don't they have the plan B, like the blow up yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that... But that makes me sad because it's not as fun. I know. But they do have that that B, the B team. Right. But currently there is scrim, scaffolding, construction walls. And the up island is on shut the down. Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wanted to, I'll read something to you. This was, Gothic Rosie shared this. Okay. We talked about Gothic Rosie mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. And this was about the nickname Murphy. Oh, yeah. I did read this. Did you read it? Uh-huh. It's for Murphy's Law mm-hmm. because anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's and why I was so, saying he's steeped in drama. He's had other yes. things happen. So back in the day, so let me read what she has posted here. Mm-hmm. The dragon was only ever called Maleficent by the creative team, since that's the character. The Murphy nickname came later when the show was inst- installed on Tom Sawyer Island. In spite of all of our well-made plans in the design phase, the final dragon still had issues, including torching its own head off a week before opening night. So mm-hmm. same thing happened a week before opening night. The theme park operations and tech services people dubbed her Murphy because she was a perpetual troublemaker. Uh And so that's where the nickname Murphy came from, which I think is a fun little story. I love that. And she just continues on her troublemaking path. So cute. Yeah. Anyway, (laughs) if you're going in the near future, Phantasmic's probably not going to be running for at least a month or two. I don't know. I don't know. I hope it comes back up soon. Me too. It's a good show. It is a good show. Mm Mm-hmm. Fantasmic is down for refurb while I'm there this weekend at oh, it Disney is? World. Yeah. Well, and they came out with a statement, too, right after this happened, that they're not doing the pyro situation. So, like, the, oh. the Dragon Inn uh, Magic mm-hmm. Kingdom doesn't breathe fire right now. Interesting. Because they have halted all similar pyrotechnics hmm. across the world. Just probably going to check everything yeah. and double check everything and make sure nothing like that's going to happen. That's, so that's very fortuitous that that Fantasmic's not running. Yeah. You haven't seen it yet. I haven't. It's pretty cute. It's okay. It's pretty cute. (laughs) I believe you. You have to go see it. I mean, it's okay that it's down this time, but one of these times for sure. I was actually surprised with how much I liked it. Okay. Because remember, we joked about it. Yeah. I mean, still, it's like a cardboard cutout of the Mark Twain, but (laughs) the rest of it is good. And there's some new, there are some extra scenes in the Disney World version that we don't have on this coast. So that's fun. All right. Carrie Fisher is getting a Hollywood star uh, on the Walk of Fame, which. Why does she not have one yet? I know. It's so weird to me. It is really weird. And she's, I've obviously, it will be presented posthumously, but her daughter, Billy Lord, will be receiving that star for her, which, which is, is really cool. cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So congrats. Yeah. I think it's amazing that she's finally getting one. <laughs> me too. And I'm really weirded out that she doesn't have one already. I know. But it's kind of odd. That's cool. Does Harrison Ford have one? I'm sure he does. I'm, I'm sure, sure he Mark does. Hamill does too. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Poor Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Poor misogyny is alive and well. Yes. <laughs> uh, lots of power outages lately. Oh, my to goodness. To note, there were power outages that kept people from entering the parks the other day at mm-hmm. right at park hopping time. Park hop, yes. So the Esplanade was filled with, with people waiting. And it was it sucked, too, because, like, if they had just left, they couldn't go back into the park. They right. had just left. No. They were stuck. There was no scanning going on. No scanning. Oh. And then this morning, we're receiving reports that Genie Plus is down Everywhere. In every park, everywhere. Everywhere. I don't, is Genie Plus a thing in Shanghai, Hong Kong, I don't know. Tokyo? I know that they have the pay per ride in some of those parks. Paris does. Yes. I don't know about the other parks. We, we should do some research on that. We should do some research before on we, that. And before I know Tokyo we go. has some, yes, <laughs> soon. And I know Tokyo has some version of something. Okay. So I don't know, but. At least at World and Land, Genie Plus is not functioning. Well, as of this morning, it wasn't. Right. So. And Hopefully they get that up what? and running. I'm sure there are a lot of people waiting in line at 
town hall or where whatever guest services. Oh, I'm is. sure there's lines at Getting the umbrellas. Some refunds. Yeah, and I we've talked about this before in passing, but really my biggest complaint about Disney is their IT. Yep. For a company that big, yep. I don't understand why they have so many IT problems. Which when we heard they were doing some seven thousand layoffs, is that how many it mm-hmm. was? We were really keeping our fingers crossed that it wasn't the IT department because that not. department needs help. It's struggling. Virtual queue wasn't working this morning either at Disney World. I saw which so makes that's sense. Yeah, part of the man, part of the shutdown. It's crazy. So good luck today. May the odds be in your favor if you are at either of those parks today. <sighs> and if this is, I mean, obviously this is going to be listened to in the future. Mm-hmm. If you were in the park, we hope that we're not bringing up bad memories. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Oogie Boogie Bash is coming back to DCA. Eh, that's not I'm a big like, surprise. What in the world? Why is that an announcement? Every I, year there's speculation that they'll move it back to Disneyland. I don't see that happening. I don't know. Maybe. I don't either. I liked it at Disneyland. I thought it was fun, but it, I feel like it's superior at DCA. Okay. Oogie Boogie Bash is superior to the Halloween party at Disneyland. Okay, but I would really love to see the Cadaver Dance. Yeah, I don't see why they couldn't just bring those over, put them on the... Maybe they the don't. pond in DCA. You'd think, right? <laughs> but maybe they don't want that crossover of yeah, the Dapper Dans are such a Disneyland icon that right. maybe they don't want them crossing over. I don't know. Well, I mean, but the Dapper Dans don't spend any time on the Rivers of America normally. Right. So that's kind of a crossover. Maybe the fountains get in the way. Maybe. I don't know. I just, I would love to experience it at Disneyland once. Yeah. And then I could go back to DCA. I, it was a really fun experience. It's fun. The Halloween tree is over there in Frontierland, so that's a fun part. And then right. they do the, where the um, the Crystal Cavern, what what's it called? The mine train, mm-hmm. the mine cart. The old ride. What is built it called? It, I don't know. <laughs> the old mine cart ride that used to be over there by Big Thunder <laughs> Mountain. They have like glowing eyes in there, and okay, so they do. They did do spooky, some really fun, fun, spooky extra things over there. There were questions when I posted a poll on Instagram last week saying which would you prefer, Disneyland one, really it interesting, did. Huh. but I did get some messages about it, and one of the things was Villains Grove is really cool, and how would you translate that to Disneyland? Yeah, Villains Grove is cool, and they didn't do character treat trails over they didn't at Disneyland. At all? Uh-uh. No, interesting. So okay. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens eventually. But this year. But anyway, Oogie Boogie is coming back. No dates. Of course. (laughs) No dates. Of course, Orlando got their dates. Yes. So speaking of that, this week is the week to start buying Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween tickets. If you are going to Disney World this fall, you need to hop on that. Which at Disneyland, it's at Magic Kingdom. At Disney World. That's what I meant. (laughs) Yes. You can say that again. I know. I kind of like it. Okay. I kind of like sounding like an idiot sometimes. <laughs> yes, at Magic Kingdom. At Magic Kingdom. In Orlando. And it at starts. At Walt Disney World. I think the first date is August 11th. For and their... the last date is November 1st. That is crazy. Why? I don't know. That's not Halloween. That's Christmas. Yeah. Right? They will have Christmas decorations up probably by then, don't you think? I would think? think that they wouldn't be able to. What day of the week <sighs> is November 1st? Do we know? I let's, don't. Let's we have these things nowadays called calendars, so we're going to check that real quick. <laughs> November November 1st is a Wednesday. Yeah, that's weird. Like, it's why not even that? a Saturday night, yeah. which I could maybe see if it was a Saturday. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. That's super weird. I don't know. Totally I don't get agree. It. Anyway, um, and then Animal Kingdom mm-hmm. celebrated their 25th anniversary yes. on Earth Day. Yes. Which Very is kind exciting. of cool. Yes. And they're still continuing some celebrations. Mm-hmm. So you'll, are you going, yes, you are going to Animal Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, uh-huh. I love Animal <laughs> Kingdom so much. I'm getting a behind the scenes tour of Animal Kingdom. That'll, That'll be, be fun. So fun. I'm excited. That will be really cool. Okay. Is that it? No, let's oh. talk about the new transportation option from the Santa Ana Orange oh, County yeah. Airport to Eve. Disneyland. Yes. Yes. So this is exciting because basically you could book a shuttle for mm-hmm. a lot of money or you could book an Uber, which could be a lot of money during surge times, mm-hmm. uh, or rent a car. And those were your only real options right. for getting from the Orange County Airport to the Disneyland Resort. But now let's talk about Eve. Eve. So it is a shuttle, an on-demand shuttle. Mm-hmm. You can request it right when you get there. You're going to use the app Away We Go mm-hmm. is what the app is called. And it's an on-demand shuttle that's presented by Art, mm-hmm. which we've argued about that before, but you got it right. So what is it called? Anaheim, Anaheim Resort Transportation. Transportation. Transit. Yeah. Anyway, Art is the shuttles that you can take from all of the hotels and resorts near Disneyland to Disneyland. 
So Eve is presented by them. It's party buses is what it looks like to me. Cute. And it's $15 a person each way. Yeah. And once you pay that $15, you have access for the rest of the day to the art shuttles. Right. So if you're staying at a hotel that's on the art route, that would be a great deal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Get yourself to the park. Mm-hmm. Go to downtown Disney. Um, I wonder if they'll have some kind of package where you can buy art for the week plus Plus your Eve. airport transportation and bundle it together and save a little bit that way. We should go try it, though. We should. I know. I was When we were looking at flights, I kept thinking, oh, I'd really like to fly into Orange County because they have Eve. I wish they would get it at Long Beach. Yeah, that would be nice. Maybe, Maybe eventually. eventually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be great because that'd be beneficial. Yeah. So anyway. I'm if all for any kind of inexpensive transportation. Oh, the totally. Airport. I think it's great. Me too. And $15 each way mm-hmm. is per person, you yeah. know, so. So if you have a larger family, it might be more cost effective to do. An Uber. An Uber or rent a car, but. But for the two of us, mm-hmm. Uber is at least $30 if yeah. we're lucky. Usually it's more, more lately. Including mm-hmm. a tip. Yep. And so having a shuttle available is amazing. Yeah. And plus, you know, your luggage is going to fit in a shuttle, right. whereas an Uber is always a little dicey. Yeah. <laughs> they, so If I'm they excited. bring their little hatchback car. <laughs> <laughs> the Geo Metro. Yes. It's real hard to get your suitcase in the back of Geo Metro. Uh, anyway, I'm super excited. I think it's a great option. Yeah, that's great. And I can't wait to try them. And I think that's it for news. Okay, awesome. Our podcast is brought to you by Mouse World Travel. Imagine going on the most stress free, well planned Disney vacation of your life. Now imagine you didn't pay anything extra for that personalized service. That's what you'll get when you use an authorized travel planner from Mouse World Travel to book your next Disney vacation. From resorts to cruises and everything in between, they are here to help you get the most out of your next family trip. Just go to mouseworldtravel.com, fill out a short request form, and make sure you mention our code ROPEDROP so they know that we sent you. Okay, so today we are going to do a fun Q&A session. So we put out a little call on Facebook and Instagram yesterday for you guys to give us your best questions about anything, really. I'm sure that they will mostly be Disneyland specific, but you're part of our episode today. So thank you for all of your feedback and questions and this should be fun. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if we can think off the cuff today. We haven't really read through them. We're just looking no, at them I, right now. Yes. And I wanted it to be that way so that I didn't have time to pre-think my answers. Right. I wanted to answer honestly and off the cuff. And quickly. Ladies. Yes. Yes. I so. agree with that. Okay. All right. Go ahead. You you uh, start. We kind of answered this one in our news segment. Oh, Will you fly to Disneyland and hang out with all of us? This is from Johnny J. <laughs> and hang out with all of us on the 30th. Oh, Johnny J. I'm so sorry. It's not, it's not a firm no, but it's a pretty firm no. <laughs> what happens, though, when we don't have firm no's is they turn into yeses. And so that is a little, that's, <laughs> that's a little okay. concerning. Um, <sighs> the answer is no. <laughs> For now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, my first question is, if there were no strings attached, the parks were all yours to enjoy, what would you do? Um, This is Disneyland. We're sticking with Disneyland? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. A Club 33. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The Dream Suite. No. 21 Royal, Mm. maybe. Mm -hmm. One of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, Club 33 is slightly more realistic. Also, not realistic at all, but still. Yeah. Um, What would I do? Big Thunder Mountain during fireworks. Yes. No strings attached. I'm trying to think through this. I know, me too. See, some of these are not as easy to do off the cuff. And it, are there other people there, or is it just our, ours, like like, like a private park run day? Run of the park. Because <laughs> if there's other people there, okay, let's, my perfect day, maybe yeah. that's a great way to answer there you this. Go. Yeah. I would love to go to Club 33. Anybody listening, mm-hmm. if you have a hookup, <laughs> just let me know. Um, Club 33 would be awesome for dinner. Mm-hmm. Or 21 Royal. Yes. If I got invited invited to that, I would not say no. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would probably people watch quite a bit. Yes. I was going to say I'd like to just ride the train. Yeah. I'd like to sit at the hub or sit on Main mm-hmm. Street and people watch. Mm-hmm. Um, ride Big Thunder Mountain through the fireworks. No strings attached. I would like the people mover to open up again real quick <laughs> just for the evening. <laughs> okay. All right. And then she has a second question, and it is, if it was your first time all over again, what would you want your first Disney experience to be, knowing what you know now? Mm, that's a hard one, that too. That is a hard one. We, so Not Peter Pan. 
No. Spoiler alert, <laughs> last night we talked, our, so our guest, I won't give our guest away quite yeah. yet, but our guest last night um, just recently visited Disneyland for his first time uh-huh. ever. One of the things that he brought up was how disappointed he was with entering the park and immediately having to make a Genie Plus selection Mm -hmm. and kind of missing that moment when you get to walk in for the very first time and see the castle and see Main Street and all of the things. And he felt a little overwhelmed. And so that in my mind, like I would take that moment in. Yeah. I would. Put your phone away until. Put your phone away. mm -hmm. Take that moment in. Until 9.05 or whenever it is that you get in. Right. Right. Get in. Go to the hub. You're Mm -hmm. only going to be a half an hour out with rides. So put your phone away. And just take it all in. Yeah. Feel the sunshine on my face. Listen to the music on Main Street. Mm -hmm. The smells. High five all of the little Mickey hands down Main Street if Mm -hmm. they're there. And what would I want to, what would I, knowing what I know now, what would I want out of it? Um, I would rope drop. I didn't rope drop for the very, for the first few years. So I would for sure rope drop Mm -hmm. knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. Um, What about you? I mean, I feel like we, we do all of these things that we... And it's hard to go back, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I would same. Like I would just go and enjoy the atmosphere and not be rushing around. Yeah. But that's also hard to do if it's your first time. Yeah. Because you want to experience everything. Mm -hmm. I would go in with a good game plan. Mm -hmm. I think what I I would go in with the expectation that I'm not going to do everything in that first visit and that I'll be back. Yeah. Even if you think it's your one and only trip, mm-hmm. plan on going back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another thing we discussed last night with yes. this guest. So, you know, if you think it's going to be your first or your only trip ever, it may Pl- not be. Plan on it not being. Right. <laughs> All right. What do you have next? Uh, let's see. What is your favorite quick service restaurant? Ooh. Let's do it at each park. Okay. Uh, Pim Test Kitchen. Okay. At DCA. And at Disneyland, probably, ooh, it's a toss-up for me, mm-hmm. between Bengal Barbecue and Ronto Roasters. And Ronto Roasters, probably. Yeah, that would be my Disneyland pick as well. And then I think mine is a toss-up between Pam Tess Kitchen and uh, Cocina Cucamonga. For the birria for, tacos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even Paradise Garden Grill, depending on the time of year and what they're offering. Right. Yeah, because they've got some really good stuff back there. They're all, they're all solid. And before Pim Test Kitchen was a thing, that was like, there weren't a whole lot of quick service options over there. Don't waste your time on flows, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Poor flows. <laughs> I, they used to have a really great menu. They did. And it's changed. I mean, they have yeah. the fried chicken, which isn't as good as Plaza mm-hmm, Inn. Mm-hmm. But I liked the old menu so much better. Yeah. And it was now more I like 50s like... Diner back then. And now yeah. it's not. They kind of have moved away from that a little bit. Yeah. Anyway. It's not on my list. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite character interaction and what happened? Mine is Jack Skellington. Mm-hmm. When my Jack was teeny tiny, I don't even think he was, well, he was probably about two, between two and three. Okay. And it was at Christmas time. It was the week before Thanksgiving, I think. So Christmas was out. Jack and Sally were doing a meet and greet out in front of the Haunted Mansion. Mm-hmm. And my sweet little Jack had his, um, we bought, okay, this is kind of a long story, sorry. We bought, my sisters loved The Nightmare Before Christmas. That was like, they had all the songs memorized. And so, and it was almost their birthday. And so we bought them a little souvenir Jack Skellington book to take home. And we happened They're to, twins, yes, by the way. and we happened to see that, see Jack as we were coming out of that shop and thought, well, we'll go get it signed. That'll be fun. Um, so we let our little Jack hold the book and, and walk up to Jack Skellington and, he had a birthday button on because it was almost his birthday. Mm-hmm. And Jack said, oh, your name is Jack? Well, my name is Jack, too. And it was just so sweet. And Jack was blown away. And it was the cutest interaction. Well, okay. So I have two, probably. And Jack Skellington is one of mine. So Asher, when Asher was little, um, I should share this video. He'd kill me. I have a video <laughs> of him dancing around the living room singing... Oh, I'm trying to think. I think it might be What's This? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, one of the songs from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Actually, no. It Anyway, um, but he loved The Nightmare Before mm-hmm. Christmas so much. And so when we went, he was probably five at the time. He drew a bunch of pictures for Jack and put them in his backpack. Mm-hmm. And this is when Jack and Sally were meeting in the area between Royal Street or between um, Port Royal. And Pieces of Eight. And Pieces uh-huh. of Eight. Uh-huh. 
and which is still where they meet. I think, I think so. Yeah. I think they have them tucked away back there. Yeah. Anyway, we went in, waited our turn, and that's amazing because you get one on one time. Mm-hmm. It's not rushed. They're very cool. And Asher pulled out all of his drawings for Jack, and Jack looked through each one and commented on his favorite parts mm-hmm. of it. And I have, and it was just, it was great. So that was a really good one. Mm-hmm. Gru is also an excellent one, I think. Yeah, Gru does. Um, he doesn't say a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's, he has three words. He has three <laughs> words, but he is, you know, um, he liked a shirt somebody was wearing, mm-hmm. and my daughter was like, Groot, you're my favorite, and he put his hand to his heart, mm-hmm. and hes you can just feel that he, I don't know, he's a character meet and greet, so mm-hmm. this is really over the top, but <laughs> you just feel emotion from him, and he's really sweet, yeah. and he's massive. He's just a cool one, too. Yeah. So he's cool, but sentimental would be Jack also. Very cool. So if you can meet Jack, obviously the takeaway here is mm-hmm. go meet Jack. Okay, mm-hmm. what do you have next? If you could swap one Disneyland ride with another ride from one of the other parks, which one? I wonder if she means, like, ride to ride. So, like, Pirates of the Caribbean to Pirates of the Caribbean. Or just to get rid of Roger Rabbit and bring Flight of, Flight of Passage <laughs> over. Right. That's what I'm going to take it as. So we can say that. That's but mine. But if we have to swap exact rides. Oh, that's a hard one. It is a hard one. And my first thought was Shanghai Pirates. Oh, yeah. But, oh, man. But ours is so classic yes. that it's hard that would to be do. really hard but to But Shanghai get rid of. is amazing. I know. Someday. Um, yeah, if, if it's a, a one-to-one swap, I don't think there are any that if, I would oh, be able to here, choose. I'll do this. If it's a one-to-one swap or something similar, let's mm-hmm. get rid of the Matterhorn and bring Expedition Everest. <sighs> That's a hard one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I'm sticking with my Roger one. Rabbit to Flight of Passage. <laughs> and I would say Roger Rabbit to Cosmic Rewind. Okay. Yeah. If I like that If too. we're trading whatever, <laughs> yes. Cosmic Rewind, come on over. Yeah. There we go. All right. When do spring break crowds typically ramp up and fizzle out? Should I go next year in early mid-March or early May? I would say either of those are actually a great option. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have probably pretty good weather either of those times. Um I would say early May probably is a little bit of a safer bet because spring break crowds really do start around the second week of March. Right. Um, at least, you know, our spring break was in mid-March this year, and so you're going to hit some spring break, break crowd no matter when you go in March, whereas May is a little bit safer. Mm-hmm. But maybe before Mother's Day. Right. That's about when. And before Memorial Day, before obviously. Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's my answer there. I agree. Okay. Uh, You've just been named the new CEO. (laughs) What is the very first thing you do once given the power? No more reservations. Bring back Max Pass. Okay. Are we 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 co-CEOs? I think so. Okay. Yeah. So good news, guys. No more Max Pass. No more. No No more more Genie Plus. Max Pass is back. Uh No more reservations. Yes. (laughs) All right. Oh, and bring back uh, annual passes. Yes. Always. Yes. You can always get them. And no blockout dates on the top tier. And signature. We don't ask for much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we keep adding all this I stuff. Know. It would be a really big first week. <laughs> if you could choose only one sit-down meal at each park, character or not, which would you choose and why? So two restaurants for each of us. Okay. I think this one's not going to surprise anybody for me. Mm-hmm. I would say Lamplight Lounge at DCA mm-hmm. and Blue Bayou or Cafe Orleans okay. at Disneyland for me. And I would choose Lamplight at DCA as well, and I think Carnation Cafe at Disneyland for me. Actually, Club 33. Anybody? (laughs) 21 Royal. (laughs) Anybody? Anybody? Just kidding. (laughs) Okay. As an adult visiting Disneyland, what do you pack to take to the park? No kids, just adults. Uh, Phone charger. Mm -hmm. Either a fuel rod or something similar. Mm -hmm. A fan. Mm -hmm. I always bring a fan. Um, a refillable water bottle mm-hmm. and sunglasses. That's about it. Mm-hmm. I should pack sunscreen. I don't always. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. I feel like there are enough opportunities to get out of the sun at either park. That I'm pretty fair skinned and I don't often get sunburned yeah, at Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. We just make sure that between the hours of 11 and 2, we kind of be careful and stay indoor and stay cool. Right. If it's, if it's super sunny and hot. Um, I would add to that, well, Splash Mountain is closing. I was going to say, I would add to that a poncho mm. if you are plan on riding one of those. Grizzly River would still require a poncho. Yeah. Uh, we talk about straws occasionally. Bring yes, some straws. Yes, I always have a straw. Um, chapstick. Yeah. 
Um, lotion when you're washing your hands often, which you should be at right. Disney Park. A little lotion, a little or lotion just make sure your friend Aaron has lotion and you can use it whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's probably it for me, too. Yeah, I like to go pretty light. As light as possible. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And a sweatshirt. And a sweatshirt at, around my waist. Yes, at mm-hmm. Disneyland for sure. It's cool in the morning and cool in the evening. Maybe not in when it's 110 degrees outside, but most of the rest of the year, you'll need a sweatshirt in the morning. And even when it's 73 degrees, it feels like it's 110 degrees. Yes. So, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. With Toontown back open, how would you arrange your day at Disneyland to experience the attractions within Toontown? I've heard a lot of people say that rope dropping Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is working pretty well these days. I don't know. I think uh, probably half the part goes to Rise of the Resistance and half goes to Mickey and Minnie's. Mm -hmm. Maybe even less than that to Mickey and Minnie's. Poor Mm -hmm. Mickey and Minnie's. It is the greatest ride, and I don't understand why it's not as popular on our coast as it is at Disney World. Let's look. Well, it went off of... Oh, so quickly. Virtual queue, yeah. so quickly. Yeah. And I just feel like the wait times don't feel seem that high yeah, it's, for a brand new ride. So it's 9.14 Disneyland time right mm-hmm. now. The park's been open an hour and 15 minutes, and it's at 30 minutes yeah. right now for the wait time. So, so I think that's what I would do. I would go rope drop Mickey and Minnie's and enjoy Toontown before it gets warm and before the rest of the crowd shows up. Because it's been crowded in yes. the afternoon. Yep. So for sure, crowds will get there. Yes. Yeah, I think I agree with that. If it's a priority for you, for sure, go rope drop it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we always talk about having different experiences at night. Yeah. You could also, it's this didn't used to happen. Toontown used to close early. Right. They've been keeping it open late. They'll open again after fireworks. Uh-huh. So, so go enjoy you, it in the evening. Yeah. If, unless you have super young kids and aren't staying right. late. If you're going, if you can, rope drop it in the evening mm-hmm. when they reopen for mm-hmm. fireworks. Yeah. So you yeah. do that too. Because it is beautiful at night. That marquee around Mickey and Minnie's lights up. And mm-hmm. we haven't been there since Two Town, the whole thing reopened. Right. So, I, but I, it looks beautiful. I preferred it at night when we went. Yeah. It I was thought cuter. that was really pretty. Okay. Um, here's the next one. I know y'all love the Hojo, but are there any other hotels you would recommend? Yes. So Erin stayed at one recently that she would recommend that's close to the Hojo. Yeah, so right around the corner from the Hojo back behind the Courtyard. The Courtyard Marriott is the one with the big water park. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, comparable in pricing to a Disneyland hotel. Almost, yep. Uh, But back behind it, there is a home two suites. Mm -hmm. If you have a big family, we easily fit six in our room. Um, Lots and lots of storage. Free breakfast. Really good free breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um, easy walking distance to the park. It was a pretty good hotel if you need to spread out a little bit. Yes. And I always love the Tropicana, which Mm -hmm. is right across the street. I think that's so nice to be able to walk out your door and straight across that crosswalk. So when we go next time, we plan on staying at the Candy Cane and we're going to try it. So we hear good things about the Candy Cane. Also free breakfast, free parking there. And they have a shuttle. And they have a shuttle. Their own. And it's way recently remodeled. So the rooms are all brand new. Yeah. Um, a little further out, our family loves the ALO. Mm-hmm. It's on Chapman near the interstate. Uh, it's about three miles from the parks. Easy to take the art shuttle mm-hmm. from the hotel to the parks. Um, great rooms. It's also recently refurbished and free breakfast there. Lots of bang for your buck. It's a lot less expensive than what you're going to find right across the street. Uh, what else? Um, any of the best westerns. We've stayed at yeah, quite a few of and them. They're, they're all fine. I mean, they're not fancy by any means. Right. But... All free breakfast at those as well. And those are... And walking distance. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can't go wrong, really. No, I don't think so. I mean, there are definitely quite a few that we haven't stayed at yet. We at, need to. Yes. We need them all. So we haven't stayed at the Anaheim Hotel yet. I've heard good things about that. We haven't stayed at the, stayed at the Grand Legacy, which is also right, right there. Yes. But which, I've, I've had families, family members and clients stay at the Grand Legacy, and they said it was great, so... I think you're just in... I think you're going to get a very similar experience at any of those walkable hotels. Mm-hmm. They're all... Slightly dated, most of them. Yes. A few of them have been remodeled. Yes. Um, A few of them offer breakfast. Mm -hmm. Some of them book up faster than others. So if you have a trip in the near future, it might be a little bit harder to find a spot there. But yeah, plan a little ways out and you can get a good good spot. But really, Mm -hmm. I mean, we love the Hojo, but there are great options all along that pathway. Yeah. Okay. We are going on a friend trip in July. We have all been before many times, but what is one thing we must do in either park that no one really talks or knows about? So That's a hard one. It is a hard one. Friend trip, adults, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. 
I would say splurge for the dessert party. It's not Ooh, that nobody yes. knows about it, and it's not that it's not talked about. But, but not a lot a, of people do it. Right. And when you go with your family, it's not something that's real cost effective yes. to do when you've got a bunch of kids. <laughs> so right. I would say splurge for the World of Color dessert party. That's a good one. I would say um, the Animation Academy. I don't know. I mean, if you've been lots of times, you've probably been there. But there are a lot of people that still haven't done it. So right. I'd say go do that. And it's one of those things that my friend that was just there the other day, their last week, they went for three days. She went mm-hmm. for four. And then her husband and kids joined for three of them. And she said they were running so fast every single day that they didn't have a chance to do it. And so it's one of those things that you have to slow down and enjoy. Right, right. For and sure. then at Disneyland, what's something that... No one really does. Let's see. Do a tour. Do a tour. Maybe the the flag ceremony. I don't think a lot of people have ever done the flag ceremony, mm-hmm. which is a really cool experience. It if is. If you're around Town Square around 415, that's usually when it happens. Um, yeah. I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, enjoy the fireworks from Galaxy's Edge or on yeah. Big Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> We talked about we that We got already. some feedback. I shared a video about uh, fireworks and Galaxy's Edge, and we got a feedback. I don't remember this standing out to me, but it did a couple of different people messaged us and talk about or commented about how loud it is back there, that it's a lot louder. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe part of it is you don't have the loud music playing over yeah, it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't remember that being a huge thing, but me people neither. said bring your plugs, and okay. it's super loud in the back. So if yeah, you go to especially, Galaxy's especially Edge. Especially if you have littles. With, yeah. And you're maybe worried that's about protecting what it was their too. ears. Yeah. I'd say a lot of littles with headphones on, not yeah. headphones, but like earmuff. Kind well, of. Well, and that's like, something when we went with our friends a couple of years ago, they commented frequently. They're like, everything is just so loud. Inside the rides. Yes. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is true. Yeah. I had never thought about it. Yeah. I think I'm half deaf though. So <laughs> uh, when did you know you were hooked on Disney? Oh boy. I was probably, well, I've been going since I was three, mm-hmm. so... At least since then. I mean, I don't remember it that well, but I've been enchanted by it my whole life. Yeah, and I would say same. Yeah. I mean, there was a huge gap for me because we moved to the West Coast and mm. life changed a lot. And But I remember it from when I was a kid and I remember loving it. And then, of course, I went once as an adult with my husband and some friends and I wasn't, it wasn't then. It was the first time I took my kids when they mm. were babies. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, oh, okay, we're coming back for sure. Yeah. I just yeah, I couldn't wait to bring my kids. My husband and I went a couple of times when before we you before had we had kids. We both grew up going to Disney, so yeah, it was yeah. We went once before we no, we went a couple times actually. We went a couple times before we had kids, and those mm-hmm. were great fun. We had a great time, mm-hmm. but I think I probably really, really was hooked once I had children to yeah. take. Yeah, yeah. It and is now a- I leave them home when I go, so <laughs> <laughs> we're full they, circle. They had their chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is one ride you'd want to bring to Disneyland from another park? Oh, so we sort of already had this one. Mm-hmm. And what is one you'd want to have come back to life? Space is not an issue. So Cosmic Rewind for sure. And I guess the People Mover is the the big one that we'd like to bring back, right? I would love a People Mover. Yeah. And Carousel of Progress. We okay. talk about it frequently. Let's... <laughs> Let's just turn Tomorrowland into Yesterland and bring back all the nostalgia (laughs) rides. Please and thank you. All right. What has been your single most beautiful or greatest memory in the parks? Hmm. It's hard. There's so many Mm -hmm. to pick from. One of my favorite beautiful type memories is rope dropping when my two older boys were pretty little and we rode pirates probably five times in a row just walked on over and over and over again Mm -hmm. and then when the crowd started showing up we went and sat down at river bell terrace and had an amazing breakfast and i just the park is so peaceful at that time of the morning Mm -hmm. and i love just sitting there on the water and the sun is just barely coming up so it's still cool outside but it's nice and I don't know. Just the atmosphere over there is amazing. So that's one of my favorite beautiful type memories. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was that first trip with my kids. Mm -hmm. I have a couple, but like Kenley was two and a half and Asher was 10 months old. So he was too little to do much. But watching Kenley like meet Mickey Mouse for the first time, she was starstruck and it was just sweet. And watching her, Dumbo was her very first ride and I 
stayed off with Asher. Again, I don't do spinny rides. I get sick. (laughs) So my husband took Kenley on Dumbo, and I was off on the other side watching them. And right as they got up to the front of the line, I could tell she was crying. And I kind of motioned to him. I'm like, make her go because she's. I knew she would love it. And I knew that she was just nervous and, you know. And so I was motioning, like, don't get out of line. Make her go. Make her go. And they got on. They rode the ride and they got off. And I'm like, I'm glad you made her go. And he said, oh, no, that's not why she was crying. She was crying because she was so excited. Ah, cute. And she just wanted to get on. She was sick of waiting behind all the other people. And it was her turn and all of the stuff. And so mm-hmm. I that's just those first moments mm-hmm. taking my kids yeah. are mine. Yeah. And I mean, we've had lots of really great magical moments. Yes. But every time we go, it's a new magical moment or two. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what you can expect. Yeah. No matter who you are. All right. Summer is coming, which means hot days in Disneyland. Do you have any favorite slash secret places to cool off? So, yes. (laughs) Animation Academy, which Mm -hmm. we already mentioned. Um, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln is a great place to cool off. Mm -hmm. Um, We So we've gone into the Grand Californian lobby a couple of times. You could go in there to cool off or you could go in there to warm up. Mm -hmm. Either way works great. (laughs) You know, even if you and if you want to still be active and still take in some of the park, I mean, the grounds of the Disneyland Hotel Mm -hmm. are very lush Mm -hmm. and very shaded. And so that's an easy place to walk around and just kind of take in some beauty and beat the heat a little bit Mm -hmm. while still being outdoors. Mm -hmm. The long rides, Pirates, It's a Small World, um, Ariel, if it's open, things like that are really great for air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Um, and I agree with the Animation Academy. Yeah. It's a good downtime spot. Yep. Do you want a Galactic Star Cruiser on the West Coast? Yeah. Why not? I say no. <laughs> I think so. I think it would be great. Do you? I don't know where it would fit. Maybe that'll go on Angel Stadium property. <laughs> <laughs> we keep trying to shoehorn something in there. <laughs> I say no. I don't think it's doing that great on the East Coast. I feel like bringing a second one makes zero sense. I almost wonder to me. if it would do better over here. Do you? I don't know. I feel like all the Star Wars conventions usually happen on this side of the country. Yeah. I, I wonder if there's a bigger fan presence here. Maybe bring it over here and cut the price in half. Yeah, and it would probably there'd do have a to lot be some better. big modifications yeah. to bring it here and make yeah. it successful. But I think it would be pretty cool. I want to try it. Yeah, I'm I sure think it looks fun. I'm sure it's coming for you. Yeah. You're, we'll at Dis- you're at Disney World Weekly lately, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What has been your favorite moment of recording Rope Drop Park Hop thus far? And what has been your favorite episodes of Rope Drop Park Hop and Kids Hop? I like Kids Hop. I haven't heard it <laughs> called Kids Hop before. I like that. <laughs> like Kids Bop. <laughs> um, let's see. My favorite moment. Oh, okay. So my favorite moment of recording or of let's say of the podcast right. as a whole. It's just going to Disneyland oh, yeah. with you. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. The, fir- the first time that we got to go to Disneyland together as yeah. a as a podcasting couple yeah. was pretty magical. And that was pretty fun. Katie and I travel really well together. Yeah. Like we get along well. We don't have a lot of drama, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't always happen <laughs> with people friends. Neither of us snore too loudly. <laughs> no. I probably do. You can tell me if I do. I don't think so. Okay, good. But we mesh pretty well, mm-hmm. and I'm just happy to have found my little buddy yeah. that I can... Because sometimes it's not always possible to take our whole family as right. often as we'd like to go, and because they've got school and work and it costs money. Yes. <laughs> so And all the things, yes. which they're thrilled. They're and, thrilled that we go frequently and, without them. Yes, <laughs> and when we go, we call it work, so... <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, I agree. That's been my favorite yes. part of the podcast as a yes. whole. If we're specifically talking about the podcast, then I would say connecting with listeners. We have yeah. some really cool people that we've been able to connect with this way, yes. um, both inside and outside of podcasting. Mm-hmm. We've made some really cool friends in the Disney community. Yeah, we found our people. For sure. It's it's a cool thing. Uh, favorite episode? Yeah, favorite episode for me would be I'm trying to remember there was one episode we recorded with some guests and I remember getting off and thinking that was really fun I just really love all of our guest episodes yes I think it's so much fun to learn from other Disney experts Mm -hmm. I love gosh and I don't want to leave anybody out just know that I love them all but some that stand out to me I think I loved I loved our episode with the Disney wizard yes Joey me too Um, he was just a lot of fun and 
it was something we're not big drinkers. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that we couldn't speak to. And so it was great to have him help us with that episode. I also loved our episode with Chris Provost because mm-hmm. it was just such fun content. Yes. Everybody wants to score big on the scoring yes. rides. And, and he, he's hilarious, too. Yes, yes. And he was really fun. Delightful. I just love our guests. Yes. We've had some really, really great guests. We loved really having Lynn from the Sweep Spot on. And I actually really loved that episode that we did. It was a spooky Halloween episode with That him. was a lot That's of fun. That's one of my favorites for sure. Yep. That was a lot of fun. Yes. We've had Lynn on twice. Yes. And he's just a good time always. Yes. We've hung, I've hung out with him at the park. Mm-hmm. He's fun. Um, we've had Casey from Disneyland Daily. Yep. She was a lot of fun. We've had Hannah from Hannah Learning Disney talking to us about military. We had um, Melissa and Ashley on to talk about the best places to sit on rides. Yep. That was a fun one. We had Tegan and Teresa from the DL Weekly yes. come on and we did top five foods, which was super fun. Yes. And then our Teg epi- was hilarious. Yes. And our episode that we recorded yesterday with guests that we're not naming yet was a really fun one. It I'm was. excited for you guys to hear that next week. I just think I think I love our guests. Yes. Yeah, and guest so we're going to, that's fun. something that we have on our goals this year is to have more guests. Mm-hmm. And we have some big, we have some big goals for who we'd like to get on the show. Yes. I'm not saying anything because <laughs> who knows if it'll work. But <laughs> all right. And then favorite kids episode. That's a hard one. That is a hard one. Probably the, the <laughs> Easter egg one for me was, I think, was the most fun one. And that was one of their very first ones, too. So they were still figuring stuff out. And I just loved Asher and Jack talking over the top of each other. And, <laughs> <laughs> the kids' episodes are so chaotic. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's herding cats in here. Hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it, and I love that they get to do it. They look forward to it. They're excited to do it again. Yeah. Spoiler alert, this summer. Um, we'll have a few episodes for them yeah. this summer, for sure. Yeah, and they're they're fun. They're mm-hmm. fun to have on. Mm-hmm. I like them all. Yeah, okay. So, let's see. How about this one? You get a small speaking part. Would you want to be in a Disney, Marvel, or Star Wars movie? Ooh. Star Wars. Marvel. Interesting that neither of us picked a Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a huge Marvel fan, but they're just fun movies. Yes. Well, and I think I would not be quite as good as like a cutesy cartoon character. Right. I'd rather be a human. Right. Or whatever, a droid, whatever I would be in Star Wars, right? I'd rather be a superhero. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Having done Disneyland, if you had to choose for your next trip, what would you do for the first time? Disney World, Alani, or a cruise, and why? Hmm. I would choose a cruise. Okay. And I mean, for me, it's Alani because I haven't, that's the only one I haven't done. But, and that one's definitely on my bucket list. Can we add international parks? Sure. Um, I think I'd still do a cruise. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I think I would pick Tokyo. If I, if or you Paris, could. oh, it's hard. oh man, there's so there, much. Yes, there's so much on our list. So little time. <laughs> if you listen to our episode last week, let's add in Adventures by Disney right, in there. Right. <sighs> so many fun Disney things. Super fun. Um, had to choose for a first time. Would you choose Fantasmic if it's open, mm-hmm. or World of Color? Which one is more kid friendly? Well. <laughs> Currently, you would have to pick World of Color. (laughs) But we're going to say both are open. Both are running. I would say, I mean, it really depends on whether you have been to Disney World or not. Because if you've been there and you've seen Fantasmic already, I would say for sure World of Color. Because there's nothing like that anywhere else. Right. And especially the new one is amazing. That's my choice. And I would say World of Color, too. Mm-hmm. I love, well, and I am growing to love Fantasmic. Yeah. If you go back in our other episodes, I was very quick to say World of Color. Yeah. It's a tough one. I'm going to agree with your answer. They're both really good. And I there's nothing like the dessert party at Fantasmic either, which I really love that dessert party at World of Color. So we should do I love that next that time we go. Yeah, we should. Um, maybe that could be for our 100th there celebration. There you go. <laughs> Splash. Um, and I would say the one that's more kid-friendly is probably also World of Color. Yeah, it's a well, especially when dragons are catching on fire. Right. Not super kid friendly. Right. <laughs> There's just some scarier parts, I would yeah. say, in Phantasmic. Yeah. It's it's Mickey's having a nightmare. Mm-hmm. And so I mean Yeah. There's lots of villains and and really World of Color, especially the new one, is like just the happy parts of all the movies. Yes. So, well, there's some sad parts too, but Anyway, I would say World of Color is yeah. more kid-friendly. I get more feels with World of Color, this new version at least, than I do with Fantasmic. Interesting. Yeah. Because you've always been a Fantasmic mm-hmm. stan, which I'm sure you still mm-hmm. are, but yes. 
I would say that they are very evenly tied right now, where okay. before Fantasmic would have had the lead for me. Okay. But now they're tied. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Speaking of villains, what villains do you hope will be announced for the Trick or Treat Trails for Oogie Boogie Bash 2023? I am waiting for Yzma. Why oh, can't Yzma we Yzma? would be amazing. I huh? would love Yzma. Yes. And I was really happy with the villains from this last this last Halloween. I thought they did a great job. They picked some fun ones. Um, we could do without s- Madam Mim. I, I thought Madam Mim was funny. Did you like her? <laughs> okay. She was not, I mean. She just reminded me of like a crazy substitute teacher. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> with, with purple skin. Um, I feel like they could get rid of Sid and put a different Toy Story villain back there. Like Stinky Pete would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> or Zerg. Or Zerg. Zerg would be awesome. Zerg would be a yes. lot of fun. Stinky Pete would be a lot yes. of fun. The Prospector. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, yeah, the the uh, Monsters, Inc. guy with, what is his name? Mr. Waternoose. Water <laughs> he would be fun. He would be fun. Or Randall. Randall, yeah. Would be fun. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. And, what, and, what other villains have we not seen? And maybe it's time to get rid of some of the classics. Maybe we get rid of the... Evil Queen. Yeah, maybe. And we bring in some different ones. Yeah. Hook has never had a treat trail, has he? Nope. So Hook would be Hook a really fun, fun one. I feel like there are a bunch of villains in the parade that mm-hmm. would be fun in treat trails as well. Hades would be really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, who else is in there? Um, Nightmare Before Christmas. I mean, Oogie Boogie has his own, but the mayor would be a fun. He's not really a villain, I guess. Right. I don't know. He would be a fun treat trail, though. Yeah. Um... What else? Mother? Oh, we had Mother Gothel. We did have Mother last Goth- year. Gothel. Any other Marvel villains that would be fun? Thanos. Oh, <laughs> like do we get a Thanos treat trail? <laughs> that might be a little intense. That would really be intense. <laughs> and only half of you make it out. <laughs> <laughs> what of is the this, treat trail? What is this pile of dust over here that they keep sweeping? Um, I'm just trying yeah. to go through even more some more recent movies who the villains were in some of the more recent Disney movies. Yeah. Ursula would be a fun one. Barbosa. Ooh, Captain Barbosa. Barbosa would be a fun yeah. one. Or Davy Jones. Or Davy Jones. Oh, Davy Jones. He's odd. <laughs> That'd be hard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we could There's, we could there, redo endless, all of it. Yes, yes. endless and have, opportunity. I would think this is what I think would be cool. Which I don't know how they would do this and keep the flow of traffic going, but it would be kind of cool to actually have villains and villains grove. Yeah, even if they were in the distance, like how they were when they had socially distanced characters, mm-hmm. have them tucked behind somewhere. Sure. I think part of what I like about Villains Grove, though, is the ethereal element of it, where yeah. you kind of get to use your imagination and yeah, yeah, that's true. And it would but be really hard to do. It would. It would, it would take would, a lot of space. And people would stop. Right. Instead of walking through it. Yeah. Um, and then she has a second and third part to this question. Okay. So what do you hope to see more of this Halloween season? I well, wish. Villains. <laughs> <laughs> villains Apparently. everywhere. Why not just bring villains out, period? I like, know. why do we have to reserve them for the party at Halloween time? Have villains out in the evening. Yeah. Um, also, I would like Oogie Boogie to be a little longer. I don't love that it ends at 11. Oh, yes. I wish it went sure. to at least midnight. Yeah. And park parties, and I know, and I think part of the reason is because of the proximity to the Grand California. Mm-hmm. And you've got balconies right there, and you've got people trying to sleep. So you can't have... Yeah, but I mean, that's... If you book a room with a balcony, with a park view balcony at Grand California, that's just what you get. Yeah. <laughs> But is my at thought. one o'clock, I mean, I would love for the party to go till one. Yeah, I feel like you just I have. Don't feel like it ever really gets that loud over there. That section. really, that's true. By Villains Grove, like I don't. There's no loud music or partying going on over there. It's just that walk through experience, and then the sound of Grizzly River Run. So I don't know. Maybe and maybe close Villains Grove early. Yeah, you know, if you want to keep people away from that area, yeah. or cl- and close Goofy Sky School so there's no screaming on the roller right. coaster. But otherwise, I feel like. But keep the party open a little later. I like that I, idea. There's not enough time to do there's everything. There's not. Um, I would say more food options at Oogie yeah. Boogie would be nice. More carts. Because there are so many long lines for food during the party that our recommendation is always to eat before the party starts and not waste time looking for chili. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Freaking Walt's chili. <sighs> Go back to that episode if you haven't heard that yes. story. Yeah, I agree with that. And food would be good. And even cart food would be great, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Bring out, during Halloween, bring out some of the festival food booths and yeah, have more food fun. there. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's do another food festival. Yes. That'd be great. Let's do a, <laughs> a fall food festival. I like it. 
And what's the third part to the question? What do you hope comes back for Halloween season 2023 and Oogie Boogie Bash? Villains Grove, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think that one is amazing. And did they? No, they haven't done Halloween World of Color in a long time, right? Oh, yeah. That would be be a good one. I would like that back. Yeah. The Fluffer Um, Nutter. The Fluffer Nutter. (laughs) Speaking of food carts. Uh, I wish we could have the Dapper Dans on the water. Yeah. But it's fine. I I don't know. Halloween Screams, the fireworks show. I think it's weird that that's over at Disneyland. I know they can't do fireworks at DCA, but I don't know. I don't know either. How would you? you there's no. <laughs> All right. The party ends at 11. Everybody move over yeah. to Disneyland yeah, for right. the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, paint the night? <laughs> Let's bring back paint the night for the Halloween season. Yes. And just paint keep it. Paint the night, but make it Halloween. There you go. <laughs> If you could hang out with Walt, what are the top three things you would want to show him? Oh. Like if he was coming back for the first time since he's been gone? Mm -hmm. Um, Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. Can you imagine how amazed he would be by that? Mm -hmm. I just think it's such a feat. I think I would also want to show him one of his passion projects. So like the tiki room, something he was really invested in. Yeah, that he and, didn't actually get to Well, well no. he got to enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, that I he guess. got to enjoy, but also that is it's been maintained and yeah. it's been loved for this many years and it still looks like you envisioned it to look. Yeah, and people and love people it. And people still love yes. it. Yeah. What about did he get to ride pirates ever? Wasn't that one that got finished after he passed away? It opened in 67. So yeah, he was gone. Yeah. So let's take him to New Orleans Square. Some of the rides out there. Some of the rides that were in the process of being mm-hmm. done, but not done. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really fun. Yeah. All right. What's, last question. Yeah. Last question for me. What's your favorite overall place to stay at Disneyland? The Disneyland Hotel. Me too. I haven't stayed there yet, but I She's assume that's it. Just put it out there in is. the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Disneyland Hotel for sure. I just assume. Yeah. But that's the correct answer. There's nothing like it. Even the Grand Californian, I don't think, is at the top of my list. Really? Yeah. The rooms are bigger at the Disneyland Hotel. The headboards are so cool. And I just, I don't know. I just really like the ambiance, the atmosphere, having Tangaroa Terrace right there. The quick service at Grand Californian is not as good as Tangaroa Terrace. Right. And the pool. The pool is better. Um, I will say that st- having stayed at the Grand Californian in one of those balcony rooms overlooking the park, that's a pretty incomparable experience for sure. But for the price, Disneyland Hotel wins. Someday. A little bit cheaper. Someday I'll make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not staying at the Disneyland Hotel, my favorite that I have actually stayed at would probably be... Um, I really like the Hojo. Yeah. I like the Hojo quite a bit. That room we stayed in last time we were there was a really cool room. It was yeah. a great room. Yeah. It was so spacious and so good. If mm-hmm. I could have that room every time, I'd be happy. Um, 2219, right? 2219. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. I think the Hojo is probably my favorite. There you go. It's a good one. It is it a has good a great one. little pool area, two pool areas. Mm-hmm. And yeah, walking distance. The rooms are redone. They're nice. They're spacious. It's one of the few places where you can sit and see the monorail pass Mm -hmm. by while you're sitting at the pool. Yep. You can get a fireworks view from some of the rooms. Mm -hmm. It's a great spot. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. But the Disneyland Hotel is still going to beat it for me. I know it. I feel it. It will. (laughs) Okay. All right. That's that's it, it. you guys. Thanks so much for helping us with this episode. I hope it was informative and you learned a little bit more about us. A all little the things, bit of fun. All the things you didn't know you needed to know about us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week we have some guests, so yes. come back for that. We'll probably drop some hints this week on Instagram. So yeah. if you're not following us there, at ropedrop.parkhop, give us a follow. And also come join us on Facebook, mm-hmm. Rope Dropping and Park Hopping, a Disneyland discussion group. And feel free to... Ask questions in there if yes. you have a trip coming up. Yes, or, or if you are on a trip, post your pictures in there. We oh, yeah, love absolutely. seeing your trip reports. Yes. It's so fun for it's us. It's been fun so far. And we're growing quickly. Mm-hmm. Invite your friends. Come and join us. Yep. It'll be fun. We are about to hit a milestone in there. Maybe we'll do a fun little giveaway yeah, when maybe. we hit our milestone. Um, and make sure you subscribe, leave us a review and a rating. Yeah. And thank you very much. And all the good things. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.